Welcome back, everyone. It is time now to give a definition to this Ethernet word. And all it really is is a contention-based access method. Oof, big word, right? But that's all it really is. It's just a way that, and it comes from a long, long time ago, back in the day of the dinosaur. No, it comes back, you know, in the 80s, uh, times of bust apologies and the beginning of start apologies, Ethernet, the way data access a network. So let's, let's go back in time and so we can start understanding from then, from then to now because I really don't want to break down CSMA CD here. We'll break it down in the next lesson, but you can have an idea of what's happening, okay? And I got my handy dandy drawing tools here and I'm going to try and draw. Oh, no, I need the pencil, not the highlighter, sorry. Uh, I'm going to try and draw with uh, <clears throat> my hand. I have to hold my hand, as you know, that I have an injury. Back when uh, in the day, we used to use something called a bus, all right? And we have everything that was attached to that bus, right? We had a single cable. It was usually coaxial, coaxial cabling. And yes, my drawing is not the best in the world. That's why I normally use Visio and didn't, didn't have a Visio drawing here for you. So, but you'll like my Picasso someday when I'm not here anymore. This will be worth a lot of money. Okay. Um, what is this? This is a bus topology, right? We have a coaxial cable going across. And um, we use what's called BNC connectors in our NIT cards. And here we actually uh, crimp on to the coaxial cable using something called vampire teeth. Okay. Each side of the bus topology had to be terminated, had to be terminated, and obviously grounded. Uh, the reason, the grounding, and again, I want to get into any Network Plus stuff, but the reason that it was grounded, because if, as those books back in the day would say, lightning would come down and hit the cable, it would just run through the cable and grind down to the floor, not going to each machine, frying it as it went uh, on its little merry way. But the problem with it, since it is Ethernet, since it is Ethernet, uh, what would happen is if there was a break anywhere in the cable, anywhere in the cable, if there, if there was a break, nobody, the whole entire network would be down. Because of that, because of the nature of Ethernet, of noise. Because what would happen is that reflection will come back onto the wire and everybody would be listening, they would hear noise, so they wouldn't transmit. So it didn't matter where the break was. The break could have been here. The break could have been right there, and then nobody could have communicated. So anywhere that there was a break on there, there was an issue. If you forgot to terminate it on one side because you wanted to go to lunch, and you forgot to terminate it on one side, nobody will have communication. So a bus topology, uh, really wasn't the most ideal in the world and that's why we kept moving up. So we decided that we wanted to go ahead and create a more centralized system and that's why we created the STAR, right? And then we had computers and I like doing it this way because it's just quicker since I can't draw, right? So we had a centralized system where all computers, let's say this is computer one, and this is computer two, and this is computer three, and this is computer four. Again, Ethernet, Ethernet, all right? So anybody can talk to anybody depending, depending on the central device. Now, it, we know we have one line, right? We had a hub. That was not a good thing because hubs is what? One broadcast domain, one collision domain, cause chaos. We don't want that. If we had you know, two lines, right? Then we have a switch. We have a switch going on now. We now, hey, now we're talking. Things are a lot better. Still Ethernet. Uh, we still have one point of failure because if this goes down, then everybody's down. But if that switch goes down, rarely that that would happen. But if it does, then everybody's down. So we still have one single point of failure. That's why redundancy is so important in your network. But because of the nature of Ethernet, the nature that the data accesses the wire in order to transmit information with Ethernet is a, it's a challenge for networking. It's a challenge for networking. Even though Ethernet has taken over, even in wide area networks, uh, everything is turning to Ethernet. 
So that's how, that's the way things are going to roll, right? Uh, as far as of all types of network is due to, um, it's going to be ethernet, all right? Uh, but definitely using a switch now is gonna be, it's, it is a lot better than a bus or a hub. But again, we came from what you don't see anymore because I, when we did, I used to draw this topology and I would ask the question, is this a star or a ring? They wouldn't know what to say, right? Because there, it looks like a star. But if it's a MAU, M-A-U, multi-axis unit, that would turn it into a ring, meaning it is a physical star, but a logical ring, where depending if you're using the um, IBM or IBM method, because IBM was or was a creator of token ring. And then you have the IEEE 802.5, right? You will go either this way or you go this way, right? Meaning it will go to its lore device. Say, hey, is this you or is this packet for you? Yes, no, and then we'll send it on to the next way. Very slow, very reliable. It was based on token passing. That was this access method. Only the person with the token will actually speak. So it was a very reliable network, but it's a very slow network at the same time. Therefore, Ethernet became keen. So in the next lesson, we'll talk about the standard of Ethernet and we'll give explanations as far as to uh, what is this CSMA CD and how it works. I'll see you in the next lesson.